Okay, the next conic that we're going to talk about is parabolas, which is some one that you should be familiar with from like second and two. So the technical definition of a parabola is the set of all points in a plane that are equidistant, so equal distant from a fixed line called the directrix and a fixed point not on the line called the focus. And had we been in class, I would have done a fun little have you graph this with some cool graph paper that like leads to parabolas, but alas, you guys have to trust me on it. So the equation of a parabola with a vertex hk, that will always be your vertex, and a focal length p, or the absolute value of p, is as follows, right? So this equation that you have right here, so I'm going to highlight it a slightly different way, is something that you're given on your formula sheet, right? But you're expected to know how to use that and what it actually means, because I don't like to define it as a parabola or what each of those things are. So make sure you know how to use it and what each part means. And here we're saying, okay, if p is greater than zero, notice how this is like x squared. So this is the problems you're used to seeing in secondary two. So if the p is, or the number you think I cut out front is positive, and it's going to open up. Whereas if it, the p-value is negative, so less than zero, the parabola opens down. So you are used to seeing these parabolas, right? The parabolas you may not be as used to is ones that open left and right. And they're of just a slightly different format. So rather than having x be squared, you've got y squared. Once again, that's an equation given to you in your formula sheet, but you're going to have to know how to use it. So... On this next part, let's take a look. If P is positive, which way do you think it's going to open? It's going to open to the right. And if P is less than zero, so it's negative, it's going to open to the left. Okay, here they're just talking about the vocab. So you've got like a vertex, right? It's the point here. They usually call that HK. Axis of symmetry goes exactly through the vertex. Um, that's the line point where it crosses the parabola. Um, that's where it reflects over. Directrix is the line perpendicular to the axis of symmetry, but doesn't touch the parabola. So you, I usually think about it kind of being below, quote unquote, but it doesn't necessarily always mean actual beneath it. Um, and then the lattice rectum is a little bit new, but it's parallel to the directrix and it goes to the focus. So think about going from the focus outside to when you reach the edges of the parabola. So that's also called the focal diameter. Fun fact for you, just so you know a little bit about the equation, this distance from the focus to the vertex is the distance p. Okay, and then the lattice rectum is the 4p. But I'll get to that as we look at an example. So here we got a parabola that opens to the left. Okay, so let's start with the vertex. The vertex here is at 0, 0. Okay, the focus is always going to be inside. I usually think about the parabola like wrapping around it, which in this case is the point negative 3, 0. The focal distance is the distance to, from the vertex to the focus. So this distance is how many? It's a distance of 3. So the absolute value of P is 3. You may want to also consider here, hey, well, since it's opening to the left, that really means P is going to be a negative 3. Not the end of the world if you don't recognize that quite yet, because we can also do it at the last step, but just a heads up. The equation of the directrix, so your line here that goes up and down is your directrix. Since it goes through the x-axis, that's an x equals, and it's the number 3. Some things here to recognize, too. While this distance is P, so is the distance from the vertex to the directrix. So those are going to be equal distance on both sides. And then lastly, the length of the focal diameter is going to be 4 times P, or the absolute value of P, I could say. So 4 times 3, so it's 12. And if we look at the picture over here on the left, if I go out from the focus to where it touches the parabola on both sides, and you count the number of spaces there, that has a distance of 12. Okay, so the equation here is Y minus K squared. And the reason why y is being squared is it's opening right and left, and we get equals 4p times x minus h. So let's think about plugging things in. y minus k, well that's 0 for the vertex being at 0, 0. 
four times, we decided it has to be a negative three. And this is the step where if you just said three, then look now and say, hey, it's opening to the left, let's put a negative there. And then x minus zero. So I really don't need the minus zero, right? So I could just write it as y squared equals three, four times negative three is negative 12 times x. Okay. So now we have, I just think it's good for you to kind of compare. When you're thinking about these, remember your x squareds are like your up and down, right? Your up and down. And then y squared is your left and right. So if this number, this 4p up front, is positive, greater than 0, remember it's going to open up for these ones, or if it's less than 0, it opens down. Similarly over here, we know it opens either right or left, depending if it's positive or negative. Okay, the vertex will always be the same in these ones, h comma k. The focal distance will always be that absolute value of p. And I like to think about these just like kind of visually. I'm more of a visual learner, so if that's not like the way you learn, um, take that inspiration as you go through here. So, hey, the axis symmetry goes straight through the middle, right? So that's going to be an x equals line. And it x equals h, which comes from the vertex. The directrix is going to be below here, right? Or above in this case. So it's going to be a y equals line. And the trick we do is we take the vertex and we add this distance p. Or we take the vertex, sorry, um, and we subtract p, sorry, because we're kind of thinking about going down. In this case, like, it will usually be a negative, so then you, like, subtract negative. It's really, like, adding. So then we get... Um, the y value of the vertex is k, and we subtract the p. The focus is on the inside, so a way to think about this is think about taking that point in here, we're going up p. So it will still be the same x value of h, but we're going to take that y value, and this time we're going to add p. So notice here we got a plus and minus p, but the y value is what's changing. And the focal diameter length doesn't change. Okay, so let's look at the other part now. So the axis of symmetry now goes straight horizontally through. So it's a y equals line. And in this case, it's the y value of the vertex, so it's k. So it's a horizontal line. Similarly, you can think about um, the directrix as being kind of to the left here. So think about you're subtracting that value of p. And then the focus is in the middle, so you add that value of p, but this time our x value is changing. Okay. Find the equation of a parabola with a vertex at negative 2, negative 3, and a focus at 0, 3. So the vertex at negative 2, 3, this is where your vertex is. And sometimes I put like a little v there, so I remember that it's talking about the vertex and not the focus. And then 0, 3 right here is the focus. Just from that, you know that this graph, I'm just going to do a sketch over here on the right, looks like this. It's got to open right because your parabola always wraps around the focus. So let's just take a look. If you think about your equation from that alone, we know that it is a y squared. So like y minus k squared equals 4p times x minus h. So you know some of this already, right? Like I can plug in. For my x value, I'm subtracting a negative 2, so this is really like x plus 2. And I'm subtracting a 3 for my vertex, so it's going to be y minus 3. The only thing I don't know is my p value. So you, it doesn't matter if you have the focus or directed, so you just are saying what's the distance between those two. In this case, it's a distance of 2. So, and since it opens the right, it is positive, so we can just plug things in. We got y minus 3 squared equals 4 times 2 times x plus 2. And 4 times 2 is 8, so to make it look a little prettier, I'm going to do y minus 3 squared equals 8 times x plus 2. Okay, let's look at the next one. In this case, before I actually um, identify and kind of graph it, slash analyze it, I need to put it into the form that we had. So notice here, not quite the format we're used to. So I've got to put, let's, in this case, I've got x squared. So that's going to be on one side. And I'm going to move the negative 4y. I'm going to add it to the other side. 
such that it starts to look like the format we had kind of in the other ones. So once again here, we're going to complete the square like we were doing um, before. So here we got to decide in this case what we're adding to complete the square. And we're just completing the square on the left. So in this case, we are adding 4 divided by 2 is 2 squared is 4 again. So I'm adding 4 to the left, but whatever I do to the left, i got to do to the right as well. So if you factor this left side, we get what multiplies to 4 and adds to 4, so we get 2 and 2. So you get x plus 2 squared equals, remember the format we had before was 4p times that. So you really want to factor out at least a factor of 4, but really want to factor out whatever coefficients in front of y. Because you should be left with y like minus k here. In this case, when I take out a 4, I also, it would be y plus 1 is my leftover. Now that it's in that format, we can go ahead and recognize some of these key features. Let's start with the vertex, right? As you look at the um, x plus 1 here, right? Sorry, x plus 2. That means the, the x value of the vertex is at negative 2, and then y plus 1 means the y value is at negative 1. Your focal diameter is that whole number in front of the y, in this case, so this 4. And the focal distance is 4p equals that focal diameter. So p here, when you divide both sides by 4, is really 1. At this stage, I'm the type of person who likes to start kind of graphing to see things, but it's up to you here what you would like to do if you want to finish that and then come back. So I'm going to start, and I have a vertex at negative 2, negative 1. And we know that in this case, it is opening up, right? Because we got x squared, and then we got a positive 4. So if I go up 1, this is going to be my focus, right? This is my vertex. And if I go down 1, this is your directrix, right? Okay. Now the cool thing about the focal diameter, remember if you go from the focus and we're saying, hey, the distance here to where the parabola meets is 4. So if I go 2 on the right and 2 on the left, my parabola looks something like this. And that's usually the three points they want you to graph. The one from the vertex and the two ends of the focal diameter. Therefore, your axis of symmetry, if I now like, look at my picture, I can label some of these things. So the axis of symmetry would go straight down the middle here. So it is x equals a negative 2. Your actual focus is 1 above here. So it is at negative 2, 0. And your directrix is 1 below the vertex. So it's at the line y equals negative 2. Okay, let's practice at least one more time of putting the equation into standard form. So notice here, I have a y squared. So this time, I'm going to put my 2y squared plus 4y, and I'm going to move both the number and the 6x to the other side. So I'm going to have that equals negative 6x plus 4. Okay, this one becomes a little trickier because there's a number up front. But usually we don't want, like if you think about this general form, it was y minus k squared equals 4p times x minus h, right? There's no number out in front here. So the way that we get rid of the number is we divide by that coefficient in this case, which is 2 on both sides. So we get y squared plus 2y equals negative 3x plus 2. And just like we did in the previous problem, you got to decide what completes the square here. So 2 divided by 1 is still, sorry, 2 divided by 2 is 1, and then squared is 1. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So this left side factors to y plus 1 squared. And this right side, I get negative 3x plus 3. Not quite in the standard form, though. Remember, you got to factor out whatever's in front of x. So you're going to have x plus 1, sorry, y plus 1 squared equals, take out a negative 3. And if you divide both of these by negative 3, you're left with x minus 1. Okay. Your vertex this time, you got to look at the x minus 1. So that means x is a positive 1. And the y plus 1 means the y value is a negative 1. 
In this case, the focus is a little bit trickier because notice here, you've got negative three this time equals four P. So you divide both sides by four and P does equal a negative three fourths. So if you think about this one, in this case, it does open to the left. because it's Y squared and then we got a negative. We're saying, okay, this is the point one comma negative one. I'm gonna go inside it by a distance of three fourths, right? And I'm going, I'm changing the X value here. So if I take my one and I subtract three fourths or add a negative three fourths, I end up at one fourth for my X value and then negative one. Your directrix will be on the other side here. So over here on the, the right, but we're going a distance of three fourths again, right? So we're saying if we take one and we add three fourths, you could have that. It's an x equals equation. You can either have it as one and three fourths, but usually like those as improper fractions, which is four seven fourths. Okay. Um. This one I think is not too bad. It's got this picture for you, so I'm gonna have you guys try to write it. Go ahead and pause the video, and then when you unpause, I'll have the answer here. In this case, the answer should be y squared equals a negative 12x. So see how you did. Okay, now we've got one more kind of writing equation and two applications. So on this next one, it says, find the equation for the parabola that has the vertex at the origin. So we got 0, 0, right? And the focal point is 148 units to the left of the directrix. So... This is 148 units between the directrix, right? And then the focal point. Notice here, since this is the focus, right? Directrix, vertex, it's gotta be opening to the left. So here, you would know that we have like that y minus zero squared equals four p times x minus zero, right? The zero, zero for being the origin. And I just gotta decide the p. And remember, if the whole distance from the focus to the, or the directrix to the focus is 148, but I just want half of that, your P is going to be 148 divided by 2. So in this case, it is 74. Okay, so we're going to have Y squared equals 4 times 74. And this is where I pause for a second. Notice it's opening to the left. So this is a good time to add in a negative times x. I rewrite that and multiply negative four times, sorry, four times a negative 74, end up with y squared equals negative 296x. Okay. These last two are some applications. So a satellite dish is a par parabolic shape. So here's my parabolic shape. Actually, maybe go like this is my satellite dish. And then when the distance of eight feet across the opening, so they're saying, okay, this distance up here is eight feet, and a depth of three feet, and this is three feet, um, at the center. Where should the receiver be placed, aka the focus? And that's a cool application. On these ones, I always try to set it at like just zero, zero, because it makes life a little easier. Not to say that's the way you have to do it, but if you set it at zero, zero, now let's say we got to figure out the focus. So we've got to find out P. So in this case, you know, you have another point. If you want to think about this point on the edge here, we know the Y value has to be three. And if that whole distance here is eight, it's got to be four. Be careful here. Some of you will like assume that that eight is the focal diameter, but that's not actually true. It ends up being in this case, that like the focus is kind of down here. So be careful not to jump to conclusions. So here I have an x squared equation, right? So I've got x minus zero, which I don't need to write. I can just write x squared equals four p times y minus zero. So I'll just say four py. So if I wanted to solve for p, the easiest way is to plug in this point we've got, right? Do four squared equals four p times three. 16 equals 12p, divide both sides by 12, 
and P equals he's 16 over 12, but that simplifies to 4 thirds. So it should be 4 thirds feet above the vertex. Okay. An arch is the shape of a parabola, so this time it's going down. Up to you here this time, we could call the top zero, zero, or sometimes on these ones I call like just the middle of the bottom zero, zero, um, but up to you there. Has a span of 90 meters, so that means, hey, from here to here, that's 90 meters, and a height of 9 meters. So this point right here would be 0, 9. And this point on the edge is 45, 0, right? Because half of 90. So if we wanted to think about the equation here, um, I could do my vertex is at 0, 9. And this is going to be an x squared, but it is going to go down. So x minus 0 is still going to be x squared equals 4p times y minus 9. In this case, you don't, I mean, you could add a negative in the P with the P right now, but when you solve for P, it actually will work itself out. So if I plug in this 45 for X, and I plug in 0 for Y, I end up with 45 squared equals negative 36 times P. I divide both sides by negative 36. I guess I should have said I got negative 36 by doing 4 times negative 9. And you end up that P is equal to negative 56.25. So the equation here, if I multiply that times 4, I end up with negative 225. So x squared equals neg two, negative 225, and then y minus 9. Okay, and then the center... Determine the distance from the center at which the height is 3 centimeters. So if I want the height, that's saying when y is 3, what is the x value? So we're solving for x, and we're plugging in 3. So we get x squared equals negative 225 times negative 6. And we get x squared equals 1350. We take the square root of both sides. And x equals generally plus or minus, but here we're not going to have like a negative distance. I could I guess you could say to the right or left, but usually we just think about distance as positive. It's a positive this distance, then right or left is thirty six point seven four 